piano people, Ashley from Ashley Young Music Studio here, and today is very exciting because you get to watch me teach a real piano lesson to one of my real students. We're going to observe Jordan's lesson today, and Jordan is an adult student that's been taking lessons with me for several years, and he studied a little bit on his own before that, and you're going to get to watch him. So let's dive in. Hi Jordan, how's it going? Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How is my sound? Your sound is great. It, it sounds really clear and crisp, actually. Good. That means yeah. the new microphone is working. Finally. Yay! And no <laughs> echo! <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, it's very, very clear. That's great. Well, how's the uh, how's the practice going? It's been going well. There's been, there's been a lot of Mozart the last couple of days. All right, let's jump into Mozart. Very good. Okay, so thinking about Mozart, we have been working very hard to make the left hand not pluck make the left hand drive the beautiful music with its delicate, gentle Alberti bass. We'll see how successful that was. And we've been working on the, actually, so the, we, we talked about this trill at like measure 15. I just want to verify, because this is how I've been practicing. This is, this is what we've been saying. This G, lift up and then down. I've been struggling with my wrist down to get the good gentle motion. What we had talked about was to use the G before to come up. Yeah. And then we're starting down, but as we trill. Coming up? I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that's basically what I've been doing, so I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's a complex movement, but it's, it's the rotation and also the wrist starting a little bit from down and then coming up. Coming up, yeah, so yeah. you're like rising. Exactly. And the, part of the reason of that is that whenever we're doing a trill, if we can get the rotation, that's great. But as long as any part of our arm is stiff and there's no movement, there is an opportunity for tension. So when we're having an issue with tension, if we can create movement in the area of tension, oftentimes that will make it so it's not possible to be tense if you're moving and if you're doing these fluid movements. All right. I have faith and it's going to go great. I do. Um, are you ready to hear it? Yes, I'm so excited to hear it. Are you so we're gonna play through the whole thing? Are you gonna use the metronome? I was planning. You know, here's the here's the thing about the metronome. I've been doing good about switching back and forth between the metronome. Okay. It is much easier for me to remain fluid and relaxed and have everything sound pretty without the metronome. But at some difficult technical spots, the rhythm might not be dead on without the metronome. Okay. So which way would you rather to hear it? How about actually let's hear it without the metronome? And okay. we'll see what happens. And then I might have you, if, if you have the energy, I might have you play it after we work on some things with the metronome. That sounds great. Okay. I, don't, I don't mind drilling this one at all because like right. I'm, I'm actually having fun trying to get this one really good. So good. this is but, 70. Okay, yeah. good. I was just gonna say, let's get your tempo, but you're already doing it nicely done. Yeah, because otherwise it would have been 90 and I would have just collapsed. <laughs> all right. Two. 
I think that was I think that was good. I know I might have like thrown you off a little bit by having you not do it with the metronome, I mean, but I do think it was interesting to see what happened. I wonder how fast I was is my first thought. <laughs> yeah. So what was interesting? Well, I'm interested to know if you know where the rushing and slowing down was happening. You know, actually, no idea. I would have said I was trying. Did you hear my very careful verbal counting? I did. So I would bet money that there were spots where I was not carefully verbally counting and that those spots were rushed. But whatever spots those were, I don't know where they were because I was like, that was the part I was focusing on something else, right? Right. So what was interesting to me is that the counting was pretty good throughout, actually. And now that you say that, there might have been times where you dropped out a little bit. But you started rushing pretty immediately on the scales in measure five. Really? Ah, darn. But then what was interesting is that at measure 11, it slowed down. So then you Mm -hmm. got like slower than the original tempo. And then same with the, this part with the trills. I was faster or slower during the trill? Slow. Like it started getting slower and slower and slower until the end of the exposition, which was interesting. So, and then in the beginning of the development, you started rushing again on the scales. And it was kind of similar. So anytime there were scale passages, it was rushed. And anytime there were trills or like the awkward arpeggios in the left hand, you started to slow down and Mm. get too slow. So overall just rather uneven and played with a sense of technicality or like the technical element leading as opposed to the sense of rhythm and the really you know steady beat leading so Mm -hmm. i have a couple of thoughts the other thing that i'm noticing as you're playing is everything is so tight so tight and it sounds good yeah you're doing a good job it doesn't sound super tense all the time but i do think that part of the reason that you're slowing down is because there's a lot of tension it's not possible for you to play it as quickly as it requires unless you're not tense. So I I know we talked last week about having you go really slow with the metronome mm-hmm. and choreograph some of these motions and then really slowly start to speed it up. And I'm wondering how much you did of that. And I'm wondering if we can do some of that together. I, today. We could do it right now. Cause I was, I, I was not very good about that. I, and my problem was, and like, this is not a good reason not to do it, but I have trouble not doing the super heavy plotting very slow you know what i mean and i don't know maybe i should just like let myself do super heavy plotting when it's slow so when you're doing it really slow are you taking little tiny sections like a measure or are you trying to do like whole page oh i'm trying to do like a phrase usually yeah let's take the second half of measure 14 and the first half of measure 15. so we're gonna do essentially one measure but it's gonna be half of measure 14 and the first half of measure 15. and what we're gonna do is well first of all we're just gonna see what happens when we put it at 40 we're gonna see if we can get it in time and then once it's in time we're really gonna hone in on that wrist motion and we're gonna do that that sounds great so but let's go ahead and like count maybe a measure and then count the first two beats and then come in right on b3 okay one two three Four. One, two, three. Oh, no, that's half. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. One, and two, and three. I'm still not right. My gosh. No, so that was maybe right. Count, maybe count to measure with the subdivisions. Okay. And then, and then try it. Two. One, E, and uh, two, E, and uh, three. So we're slower, right? Yes, good. Let's do it again. Now, did you hear that little clipping? I did. did. And that is like, that's happening at faster tempos too. Is that okay clipping or is that not okay clipping? No, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll address it. But my concern right now is just getting it in time. Right. Okay. And getting it to the point that we can start here. And I promise I didn't ask you to start on beat three of measure 14 to like torture you. Um, no. But because tension is the issue, I'm making you tense. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm recreating the tension at this slower speed by making you start at an uncomfortable point. Because if we're playing it this slow, it might be tense because it's hard to play slow sometimes, but it also might just feel super, super easy. So we're making it a little more challenging to make sure that you're a little off your game so that that tension doesn't completely go away so that we can fix it. Yep, I got it. Okay. I'm going to nail okay. it. Let's just do it. the trill and you're really thinking about where the trill lines in with the rhythm and that's also part of the problem so let's do that like three more times okay okay 
Okay, so what's happening a little bit is that you're not getting down when you start the trill, and so then in the middle of the trill, you're going down, and then yeah. you're not up in time. So you yeah. have to just go for it and be down, even though it feels scary, so that you can get up in time. Okay, getting down. You can do it. That was like too fast. So. I know, which is interesting that all of a sudden it's really easy to play it fast. <laughs> my wrist go down no let's combine it with the with the wrist motion it's either you have the wrist motion and it's rushed or you have it in time and it's tense all right here we go Three. We're, I, yeah um can you take a big breath right as your hand comes up yes okay i'll try that to focus on it's getting there though let's do it again okay so it's it's not quite there but do you see what we're going for yeah and the attention to detail that you are now paying is really great because you're able to hear the difference between when it's like a millisecond rushed versus when it's a millisecond slow and that's exactly what we need no nope, i'm gonna nail it just let me it's just the, it's the, it's the focusing on so many things at once because of the like up, down, krill thing. Yep. It's so I tell you what, actually one time, let's just do it just right hand. What do you say? Sure. That's oh, you know, the other thing that's happening is you're actually starting very slightly before the beat. Am I? On the I wonder if I'm yeah. doing that just you're to like try and give myself more time. Uh -huh. I think you're coming in slightly early, which also might be contributing to the feeling of rushing, but it might actually not be rushing. It might just be that you're starting it a little bit early. All right, let me try and nail it right on there. Oh, that felt so much better. All yeah. Of a sudden. Let's do it again. Okay, one more time. Three. Oh, no. I came in again uh, early again, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Okay, I think we just, good idea to do it hands blown because I think we just actually nailed the problem. I don't think you're rushing it. I think you're just starting like a hair before the beat. All right. Yes, and did you hear how you're giving it like a little bit of emphasis on the beat? Yeah. That's really helpful as well. I mean, I just noticed there's actually an accent there, so it's probably even allowed, right? So. Yes, definitely. Let's do it again. Three. Good, let's try that with the left hand now. Okay. That's okay, try again. Three. Yeah, now let's let's do the left hand once alone and make sure it's not coming in early. Okay. Three. Four. One. Three. Counting, but <laughs> again. So don't forget. It's a little on edge, but closer. That's good. Let's do it again. Okay. Hey, I think that might have been the best one. How did that feel? Yeah, no. And if I go do this another 50 times before I let myself go up to 45, like I'll yes. actually be able to play this. Yeah. So. so the theme, and we can go on and do a little bit more on a different section, but the theme of, of any practice you do, or really of the practice that we're going to do together when you come back, is going to be um, slow. So theme of New Year's practice is slow. And yeah. I mean slow, like fully. Yeah. That's good. I need that. I need that patience. Yeah. In this. And it will be really good because all this uh, modern stuff we want to play has those incredibly scary fast sections, which you have to be able to do this to do. So Yeah, exactly. And I think you nailed it on the head when you said it's really hard to stay loose when I'm concentrating on so many things all at the same time. And it's mm -hmm. true. And as our music continues to get more advanced, it's like every time we get to a new level of peace, there's more things to think about. But also just in a piece, every time we get to the point where we're 
you know, leveling up and getting better at the piece, there's more things to think about. Because naturally, if we're just paying attention to notes, we're not thinking about all the other stuff. If we're just paying attention to rhythm, we're not thinking about all the stuff. But once we try to put it all together, there's a lot going on. So when we slow it down like this, you have a better chance of being able to do it all at once without tension. Okay. So the important things that we're doing here are one, we're going like painfully slow, torturously slow, but we're also not taking more than a measure at a time. So that it's not plotting, we're not taking away from the musicality, we're really focusing on like the physical element of how to play it, how it sounds, and tuning in with your ear, which you just did so beautifully, to make sure that it's all going how you actually want it to go. And that's, I think, the part a lot of the times that gets left out, is like if we're not actually focusing and really listening. So let's do that, let's do that with one more section. I wanna give you a little bit of practice on like tuning in your ear and listening and seeing if it's really what we're trying to do. Let's actually, if you're okay with it, let's do a scale section. Oh, um, by the so way, I was happy the scales were actually accurate. I'm sorry yeah. they were rushed, but I was happy with them like getting the right notes. Accuracy wise, they were good. And also they felt more comfortable. Like it felt like you were com like comprehending them and processing them and playing them as a whole scale as opposed to individual notes of a scale, which was really great. Yeah. So let's go to measure 29, the beginning of the development. And let's just take beats, beat two to beat one. And in that whole section, the thing I've been thinking about is like wrist motion, so. I'm trying to think of that as like two wrist rotations instead of a whole bunch of individual notes, right? Yeah, the other way you can think of that, um, the other way you can think of that one is similarly to when we do our scale passages, and we talked a lot about this in the Moonlight Sonata, and we've also talked about it a little bit in some of these scale passages. In big arpeggios and scales, we want to lead with our elbow. This one is an arpeggio, but it's all contained within one octave, essentially. And so you can think of leading with your wrist. Right. And that might help you, as opposed to thinking of like all of these individualized wrist movements, just think lead with your wrist and kind of let your wrist guide you to where you're going, and that might help you... Do it a little more naturally. Okay. So 40. 40, starting on beat two, just yep. that little bit at, uh, sorry, 29 at 40. Good. That was in time. That was also very beautiful finger motions. Great. Yes. I'm glad to hear you say those things. <laughs> How so was now, the, on that exact spot, I'm always worried about uh, the like how to play that right um because it could be very easily pokey yeah i didn't hear it but let me let i'll turn right. into it now that you're let's try it again two three. Oh yeah that's nice it's not pokey at all and i think very you good. just you just nailed it where if both hands are releasing at the same time that's yeah. what's gonna that's what's gonna make that nice okay again but let's focus now a little more on that relax relaxed wrist very good Uh, and see, it's it's uh, where I'm coming back and like my fingers are changing position, but yeah. my wrist suddenly got tense there. Yeah, and I'm also, remember, so when we're doing this part, the only way that the wrist motion works is if we're rounded. Because if we're like this and we're moving our wrist, it's not really doing anything. But if we're like this and we're moving our wrist, it's actually helping us to play the notes. All right, good rounded wrist. And I'm just going to think about this. That's the awkward one, yep. So I'm just, so I'm probably what I'm going to do. So let me just look at it. That's what I'm gonna do. We'll see if it goes well. Okay, so hang on. What I'm seeing a lot of when you're doing this is um, this, like this kind of like, almost like your wrist is following and it's a little bit robotic-like, mm -hmm. but what we wanna go for is like these smooth, more circular motions. And I want you, I guess, as we play it, to think about like, how can you move your wrist in a way that is the most graceful as possible while you're- All right, let me even just like try that. Yeah. So. Yes, and we can really exaggerate it just like you did. Let's do that again. Okay. Right notes. And so that was beautiful wrist motion. But what I'm still hearing is when we go, especially, I'm still hearing your pinky go bum 
and like poke that note out and kind of slam it out which yeah. if we really trust that the wrist movements are there and that we have a flexible wrist we don't need to do an extra slam with our pinky that note's gonna come out because the weight of our arm is behind it and is supporting it right Yeah, and then do you have accents on beats two, three, and four? I have accents just on beat three and four. Okay. But it's awfully hard to not accent beat two. <laughs> Let's just say, like, you can consider the, like, consider the accents, but maybe don't exaggerate them so much right now. Right, I'm, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, like, drop my elbow on them, but I'm not gonna do anything with the pinky. Is yeah, the exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was better. And now I just want you, I know this is so picky, but I want you to think about the difference between like really slamming out a beat and really like emphasizing a note that's not the downbeat. Does that make sense? A little bit. So right now what's happening in, in your accents is that they're all sounding like downbeats. Whereas oh. if we can think one, two, three, four, one. We can still accent them a little bit, but they're not the downbeat. And we need to make sure that we're still moving through them and we're not play the, playing them like the downbeat. Okay. Let me let me process that a little. Okay. I no, I think, I think, I think I think I will attempt to achieve that now. Okay. Nope, see, and that's see, and I didn't hear your one. So first of all, count one and then start on two, and then the, okay. think about the accents as being in the context of the dynamics. So let me actually see. Forgive me, I'm gonna play one. Yeah. One, but do you hear how you kind of landed on two? Yes. Da 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 da. Can we yes. just play two but not land on it like that? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Let's let hang on. Let's focus on this a second. So Maybe. That's a little better. Yes, that's a little better. And I know it's easier to do when you're going faster. But just think of it this way. We have our downbeat. And we have dynamics mm -hmm. and we have articulation and we have the rhythm and we don't ever want any of them to get in the way of us feeling like we're moving forward through the right. measure to the downbeat so if we have accents on beats three and four if let's say you're at like a volume level four right. on the first accent it's going to come up to maybe like a five or a five and a half let's right. say you're on a volume six on the second accent it's going to come up to like a seven or a seven and a half so it's not going to be like all of the accents are the same volume of forte and the same right. level of percussive they're just slightly emphasized based on everything that's around them right yes. so you're saying actually the downbeat should be more powerful even than the accented third beat is what you're saying i'm saying that they're different one is like a rhythmic like a rhythmic observation of a beat and the other one is an articulation but if i had to choose yeah i would be in favor of the downbeat. yeah because I, I could really hear it when you were playing it i'm just my my mind is breaking how to achieve that exact same effect it's a, um, so just think for now just think of the accents as they can't like come out of nowhere they have to be in the context of the volume of the piece and of where you are in the measure so if you're counting and as long as you're not accenting them out like to a fortissimo you should be okay okay so let's count right. the whole measure from the beginning to the beat one of the next measure. And I want you to play through it, make those accents fit within the context of playing through the measure. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Yes, exactly. So now not rushing in with metronome. Yes. Very good. And also then we can always add a little more if we want to emphasize those accents more. Okay, but that, that was like an approach. That was good. That okay, was good. okay. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying artistically, if you're like, no, that wasn't enough, you know, you can always go more from there. Artistically, I was okay with that level. The problem yeah. is just I've been really banging them. Well, yeah. and this, this is something I need to work on. It's like differentiating between accents and beats. So, one, two, three. Oh, no. Okay. One, two. Now more yes. wrist motion, though. Yeah, but you know what? That was actually a good amount on the end, the four, one, and I could see your wrists even kind of leading you to the downbeat. And um, I, I was feeling like pressure to speed up, so uh, apparently yeah. wrong. So no, very wrong. Not for you, just for my internal voice, right? Right. Until we can do all the wrist motions, we can't speed up. Like, it's yeah. not going to get any easier to go faster. Right. No, I, I was getting to that point where I was like, oh, this is never going to be any faster than this, right? So. Right. Wonderful lesson. Jordan, have an awesome couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.